All right, I am currently in my rental vehicle, a uh, 2017 Mitsubishi whatever this thing is. Um, actually, it says it on the floor mats. It's an Outlander. And the trim levels were, there's like four trim levels. This one is the ES, which I think is the lowest. Comes in at about $25,000. So, you know, uh, I'm going to show you around. I'm going to give you a little review of what, uh, this is my, uh, Mitsubishi Outlander rental car review. Enjoy. You hear that motor purring. Let's put this bad boy in a little bit here. You got a nice little backup camera. Show you, you can watch yourself run into things. It's like a movie. It's pretty cool. You got a camera. camera. So, so let's talk about the innards of this thing. Man, actually, let's not. Let's talk about this. Uh, Jaguar. That's uh, sweet. All right, back to the, back to what everyone wants to hear about the 2017 Outlander from Mitsubishi. Woo. All right, here we go. So the motor is a 2.4 liter, 166 horsepower. Look at the RPMs. They don't change, yet I'm going faster and faster and faster and faster. So if you've never driven a CVT transmission car before, it is really weird. So it tells us when we're in eco driving eco that's cool but if i push the gas oh light went away oh I'm at infinity miles per gallon while i'm coasting down the hill that's pretty cool uh really advanced one interesting thing that they have done inside is they put carbon fiber trim here's what's weird about the carbon fiber trim um my evo has piano black trim and it didn't come with anything carbon fiber inside here's some cool things on the dash there's a big thing that says passenger so that um, if you forget that you have a passenger, that will tell you. Um, and right now, see, I don't have a passenger. Uh, and But I actually know that because this isn't lit up. Because I hate, uh, in my current car, I never know uh, if someone's sitting next to me unless I turn and look. So, I mean, that's, that's a nice feature right there. There's also uh, dual climate control, which is uh, becoming pretty standard on cars, but... It's a nice feature in this one, um, considering everything else it lacks. I mean, think of how the chivalry, you know? Oh, baby, you're cold? Hold on, let me. Yeah, see, now, now we're talking, so. Oh, now you're warm? Oh, let me, oh, see, I got you, I got you, girl. That's nice, but that's nice. Here's one thing I'd like to discuss about this car. Um, it's pretty interesting. This is the ES base with the four wheel drive and you can tell it's the base because it has fake buttons. I can't stand fake buttons in cars, but this car doesn't just have fake buttons. Uh, let me show you exactly what I mean by it has fake buttons. All right, for starters, I can turn traction control off I can switch menus up on that guy, uh, and then I can't, I could probably do something else with another vehicle of theirs with this. And then we have all these options of things I could do. So this would do something, and that would do something, and that would do something, and then there'd be a thing here, and maybe a switch or something here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six so far fake buttons. And then we're on the steering wheel and you can uh, set your cruise control, you can cancel it, or you can fake button. Okay, that's uh, seven. Then we come over here and then I have, I'm charging my phone here, but underneath my phone charger, I could do something here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, more fake things I could do. Uh, this is a fake SD card reader. So that's kind of 13 right there. Not really anything I can do. Uh, and then we have vector and another fake thing. 
So what are we at, 14, something like that? And then if I want to start the car, um, let's see if I can get a good angle. Oh, there we go. There's the push button, start fake button. So 15 fake buttons that I can reach. What the heck does this car do in a full trim? Here's another cool feature it has. So it has a, uh, a four weed button right here. So you push this for weed, and then you can see on the screen here, this little weed shows up. So now you know you're in weed mode, and it'll actually rate you. So I have three weed leaves right now um, based on my eco driving. Uh, if you drive better, you get more uh, leaves on your weed. So that's pretty cool. So the car doesn't feel too much larger um, parked next to my wife's Jeep Cherokee, which is just a five seat passenger SUV. Uh, one shocking thing about this, it's got three rows. What? Three row seats. That's pretty cool. So there is third row seating, but if you have kid seats in your car for your kids, you can't get to them by lifting the seats up as you would expect to. So if you have kids in your car and you want to use the third row seating, what you have to do is kind of wiggle in here like this. And then what you're going to have to do is climb over this. Um, and, you, and you get, you just go a little bit sideways and you're in. I mean, it's pretty much as easy as that. Um, to get into the third row, which uh, I wouldn't suggest for an adult to sit back here uh, for any extended period of time. So I'm gonna show you, <clears throat> hold on here, what it looks like to sit in the third row. Third row seating, here we go. Here's a look, come on. You can look at the baby, but you really can't because you're you're just stuck here miserable, you're not really paying attention to the baby. Alright, I'm in the second row. Whew. That might be a common problem with third row seating, I don't know, I've never been in a vehicle that has it. So, who is the purchaser of the Mitsubishi Outlander? A modest, modest family. You know, it's got nice wheels on it, but uh, it's the family that puts the, the stick figure family, uh, including their pets, on the back. Uh, it's the family that shows up to the soccer game and has all the individual orange slices for each kid, uh, but remembers that little Johnny is allergic somehow to oranges and brings him an apple. Maybe it's for the dad that drives uh, across country with his family to take him to Disneyland and still wears his Disney Mickey Mouse shirts uh, five years later. I don't know. It's not for me though. One major question we get is, will it baby? Will the 2017 Mitsubishi Outlander baby? Well, let's see. Um, you know, there's plenty of room back there, um, but I really don't think they thought it through um, how well it could baby because you can see um, the seatbelt up here is kind of a little too high. Um, it doesn't have great bolstering to hold them up well. Um, and actually the passenger light that we had been talking about doesn't light up. So does it baby? Um, eh, it does an all right job, but I would have liked to seen a little more bolstering and maybe a better belt for the children. Uh, but overall, it gets a decent score. All right, so final impressions of the 2017 Mitsubishi. Uh, no motor on this one. I mean, it just it's gonna get you to A and B. It is all-wheel drive, so that's kind of cool. Might get you through the snow. All the fake buttons would drive me crazy uh, because think of the possibilities. What could this car do? I don't know. Um, it seems like on the Will It Baby score. Uh, the front seat uh, baby passenger was an afterthought, 
So if you're one that likes to put your, your baby in the front seat, um, this car isn't for you. Um, actually no cars are, you shouldn't be driving. Anyways, um, the ride is moderate in quality. I would say the third, third row seat is a cool feature for kids. Um, I don't know. Didn't get me excited, but it's way better than that piece of crap, uh, Sentra or whatever it was I had last time I had a rental car. So... How about a uh, zero out of 10? I'll give it a six because it looks cool from the outside. The styling's nice, uh, but all the fig buttons and everything else just kind of drive me crazy. Peace.